27 is a type of radiation therapy. It's used in a treatment called radioligon therapy, or RLT. Um, you can think of it like a, a tiny targeted beam of radiation that goes directly to the cancer cells while minimizing damage to the surrounding healthy tissue. And how does it target the cancer cells specifically? Well, lutetium-177 is combined with a special molecule that acts like a homing beacon. This molecule attaches to a protein called PSMA, which is found in large amounts on the surface of prostate cancer cells. So lutetium-177 and PSMA are two different things. Yes, they are distinct. Think of PSMA as a signpost on cancer cells. Okay. The lutetium-177 is attached to a molecule that recognizes this signpost and delivers the radiation directly to the cancer cells. This combination of lutetium-177 and the targeting molecule is what allows the treatment to be so precise. It is, and this targeted approach is designed to, um, you know, shrink tumors and slow the progression of the disease. I understand that lutetium-177 has been approved by both the FDA here in the United States and the EMA, the European Medicines Agency. Yes. This means it has been thoroughly tested and shown to be safe and effective for treating MCRPC. However, it is generally recommended for patients who have already received other treatments, such as chemotherapy and hormone therapy, and their cancer has continued to grow. That's right. So it's not usually the first line of treatment for prostate cancer. Generally not. Doctors use specific criteria to determine if someone is a good candidate for lutetium-177. What are some of those criteria? First, a special type of scan called a PSMA-PET scan is used. We've already talked about PSMA. What is a PSMA-PE scan? A PSMA PET scan uses a small amount of radioactive material attached to a molecule that targets PSMA, similar to the one used in lutetium-177 therapy. But instead of delivering radiation, it delivers information. It allows doctors to see where PSMA is concentrated in the body, highlighting the location and extent of the cancer. So the scan helps determine if there is enough PSMA for the lutetium-177 to be effective. Precisely. Doctors also look at other factors like blood count, kidney function, and any other health conditions a patient might have before determining if lutetium-177 is an appropriate treatment option. It sounds like a very thorough evaluation process. It is. Every patient is different, and determining the best treatment plan requires careful consideration of individual circumstances. So let's say someone is considered a good candidate for lutetium-177 treatment. What can they expect? The treatment is given intravenously, meaning through a vein, usually every six to eight weeks. Patients typically receive up to six cycles of treatment. That seems fairly manageable, schedule-wise. What else should patients know about the treatment process? Hydration is crucial before, during, and after treatment to protect the kidneys. So drinking plenty of fluids is essential? Yes. Doctors may also prescribe medications to manage potential side effects, such as nausea or fatigue. It's important to talk to your doctor about any potential side effects. Open communication with your healthcare team is crucial. You mentioned that lutetium-177 is often used after other treatments. How does it compare to other treatment options for MCRPC? Well, there are other treatments for MCRPC, like cabazitaxel, a type of chemotherapy, and radium-223 dichloride, another type of radiation therapy. So there are different ways to target the cancer cells. Yes. Each treatment has its own potential benefits and risks. Determining the best option for each patient is a complex process that involves careful consideration of many factors. With teaching 177 shows promise for MCRPC. What about its use in earlier stages of prostate cancer? Researchers are exploring that, but there are no definitive answers yet. Studies are underway to see if lutetium-177 might be effective earlier in the disease process. That's something to watch for in the future. It sounds like the field of prostate cancer treatments is constantly evolving. It is, and that's why open communication with your doctor is so important. Let's talk more about that dialogue between patients and their doctors. What are some key questions patients should be asking their doctors about lutetium-177? It's important for patients to feel comfortable asking questions and understanding their options. Absolutely. What are some questions patients should ask their doctors about lutetium-177? Well, you know, start by confirming if you meet the criteria for lutetium-177 treatment. Ask your doctor about the specifics of your case. Um, for example, are my cancer cells PSMA positive? Do I have any health factors that might affect my eligibility? Exactly. It's also essential to discuss the potential benefits and risks of lutetium-177 compared to other treatment options for your situation. Because what works for one person might not be the best approach for another. Precisely. Um, don't hesitate to ask about the treatment process itself. What should I expect during a treatment session? What kind of side effects might I experience and how are those managed? It's also important to understand the follow-up process. 
How will my doctor monitor my response to treatment? When will I have follow-up scans or tests? These are all essential questions. Knowledge is power when it comes to your health. It sounds like advocating for yourself and actively participating in your healthcare is essential. Absolutely. Now let's discuss the different aspects of lutetium-177 treatment. We've talked about how important PSMA is to the treatment process. Right, because lutetium-177 needs PSMA to guide it to the cancer cells. Yes. Lutetium-177 is attached to a molecule that recognizes and binds to PSMA, which is found on the surface of prostate cancer cells. And this is where that PSMA PDT scan comes in, right? Yes. The PSMA PDT scan helps doctors determine if there is enough PSMA for the lutetium-177 to be effective. The amount of PSMA can vary from person to person. So the dosage of lutetium-177 isn't one size fits all? No, it is not. Doctors consider factors like a patient's weight, kidney function, and the extent of their cancer to determine the appropriate dosage. That makes sense. It's about balancing the potential benefits of treatment with any potential risks. Yes. Open and honest conversations with your doctor are very important. Earlier, you mentioned that lutetium-177 is often used after other treatments. What types of treatments are typically used before considering lutetium-177? As we discussed, lutetium-177 is generally considered for men with MCRPC who have already undergone other treatments. At this stage, the cancer is no longer responding to hormone therapy, which is often the first line of treatment for prostate cancer. That's right. Before considering lutetium-177, Patients with MCRPC may have received treatments like chemotherapy, often with a medication called docetaxel. Docetaxel is a type of chemotherapy that works by slowing or stopping the growth of cancer cells. Yes. Patients may have also received other hormone therapy that target the androgen receptor pathway. Androgen deprivation therapy, or ADT, is often used to lower the levels of male hormones called androgens in the body. Yes. These hormones can fuel the growth of prostate cancer cells, so lowering their levels can help slow the progression of the disease. So, lutetium-177 is often considered when these other treatments have stopped being effective. Often, yes. Let's talk about what patients can expect during the actual lutetium-177 treatment process. The treatment is given intravenously, typically in the arm. So, it's similar to receiving an IV infusion. Yes. Each treatment session is usually spaced six to eight weeks apart with patients receiving up to six cycles of treatment in total. That's the general guideline, but the specific treatment plan will vary depending on the individual patient. You emphasize the importance of hydration before, during, and after treatment to protect the kidneys. Can you elaborate on that? Of course. Lutetium-177 is eliminated from the body primarily through the kidneys. Ensuring adequate hydration helps to flush the lutetium-177 through the kidneys quickly, minimizing the radiation dose to these organs. So, drinking plenty of fluids helps to protect the kidneys from potential damage. Yes. Your doctor will give you specific instructions on how much fluid to consume in the days leading up to and following each treatment session. Are there any other steps taken to minimize side effects? Doctors often prescribe medications to help manage potential side effects like nausea or vomiting. That makes sense. It's about making the treatment as tolerable as possible. What about the follow-up process after a lutetium-177 treatment? How is the treatment response monitored? After treatment, doctors typically monitor patients closely using blood tests and imaging scans. Blood tests can help assess how well the treatment is working and if it's having any impact on blood cell counts or other organ function. Yes. Imaging scans, such as PSMA PET scans or CT scans, can track the size and location of any tumors to assess if they're shrinking in response to treatment. So it's a multifaceted approach to monitoring the effectiveness of the treatment. It is, and treatment response can vary from person to person. Some people may experience a significant reduction in tumor size, while others might have a more modest response. That's right. And in some cases, the treatment may not work as well as hoped. Which is why close monitoring is crucial. Yes. It allows doctors to adjust the treatment plan if needed, based on how the patient is responding. It's all about tailoring the approach to each person's needs and circumstances. It sounds like staying proactive and informed is so important throughout this entire process. It is. Um, lutetium-177 is a treatment for prostate cancer. It's important to remember that it's not a cure. Right. It's, um, it targets and slows the progression of the disease. Okay. But research is ongoing to find new therapies and approaches for treating prostate cancer. So staying informed about these new advancements and talking to your healthcare team is really important. It is.